All right, guys, uh, a bit of a, a different video today. Um, got some personal news to share with you all. I'm just going to go ahead and rip off the Band-Aid. Um, I need hearing aids. Um, so a few months ago, I was diagnosed with this genetic degenerative issue causing accelerated hearing loss in both ears as well as tinnitus. And I'll kind of explain that. Uh, in detail here. Um, so a lot of people eventually go through hearing loss as they get older. Um, this certainly isn't something I thought I'd have to deal with uh, in my 30s, uh, but here we are. Um, so so what happened? Um, well, I've actually noticed that the uh, the hearing in my right ear hasn't been that great for a few years now. And um, I'm constantly kind of just like leaning in with my left ear, when I'm talking to someone in a, in a crowded room or in a noisy environment. And and to be honest, I just ignored it for the most part uh, and put off with dealing with it. And I just assumed I had some earwax build up or some some blockage and uh, just said to myself that, you know, you know, I'll get around to it sooner or later. In addition to this, uh, for the longest time, uh, I have had episodes of tinnitus. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically your brain's perception of sound um, that doesn't have any external source and nobody else can hear it but you. Um, it's usually like a ringing or a buzzing, or in my case, it's like a, like a tone. Tinnitus is actually quite common. Uh, 10 to 25% of adults have it. Now, for me, I have noticed um, this happening randomly a few times a year, kind of going back a decade, and it never really um, lasted for more than, say, 30 seconds to a minute. And again, I didn't really think much of it. Um, well, a few months ago, at around three or four o'clock in the morning, I had an episode, and it actually ended up lasting for about 30 minutes. And uh, it freaked me out. Um, so I immediately made an appointment to see my family doctor, he did a check and then he referred me to a hearing clinic uh, where I went to, uh, to undergo an audiological exam. Now, if you've seen the movie Sound of Metal starring Riz Ahmed, shout out to Riz, by the way, who's from my ends in London. Fantastic performance, by the way. Uh, earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Um, anyway, so as I'm kind of going through this exam, this movie is literally playing in my head. I'm in this kind of isolated booth, uh, kind of going through all the various tests and what have you. So there are three parts to your ear. The outer ear, which is your earlobe and your ear canal leading into your eardrum. Uh, the middle part of your ear, which is mostly made up um, of your eardrum and three small bones. And then there's the inner part of your ear, which includes all the nerves that you know, send all the signals to your brain. So I'm kind of just sat down and I'm told that there are no issues with the outer or middle part of my ear. There's no wax buildup or any blockage whatsoever. Um, and so, and during the exam, I was kind of asked numerous times if I had any kind of family history with hearing loss. And, and I have no idea on my dad's side, but on my mom's side, you know, there have never been any issues, uh, at least no issues that I'm aware of anyway. And then I'm told that I have this genetic issue related to the inner part of my ear. Um, so the nerves, you know, sending these signals and messages to my brain. Um, my right ear is at stage two. My left ear is at stage one. Uh, and outside of the actual, you know, hearing loss and the episodes of tinnitus, I was also informed that, you know, if left untreated, it will just progressively get worse and worse as I age, but I was also informed that I would be at a high risk of cognitive decline in brain functionality, which could potentially lead to issues such as dementia, memory loss, slurred speech, and losing control of balance. So right now, as things currently stand, if I chose to do nothing, I'm already at a 200% increased risk of cognitive decline. And as I get older, it can go as high as 500%. Now, this data, by the way, it's published in a book called A Sound Mind, Treating Hearing Loss to Protect Your Memory and Cognitive Function, which is authored by Dr. Sharina Samuel, who is one of the experts in this field in Canada and who is actually treating me. And it is co-authored by Dr. Keith Darrow, who is a neuroscientist and audiologist out of MIT. 
uh, and he's been practicing for 20 plus years in the US. So I'm going to leave a link to the book, which is completely free, by the way, in the description box for those of you uh, watching this on YouTube. So, okay, I, I'm hit with this news and I'm processing it, um, but there is good news. Um, it's treatable and um, all these potential long-term risks uh, are preventable with the use of hearing aids. Um, Dr. Samuel, you know, placed these temporary hearing aids on me in her office. And I was kind of like blown away by the difference in clarity as she was talking to me. And for the first time in a while, I was able to hear what a normal level of hearing should be for someone that has no hearing issues whatsoever. So for me, it's simply a case of wearing hearing aids, which I'll have to do now for, for the rest of my life. Um, now, I don't know why there seems to be a stigma uh, related to the aesthetics of wearing hearing aids compared to perhaps someone that would wear prescription glasses to help with their vision, but there is. At the same time, though, um, with most people wearing some form of buds to listen to music or podcasts or take calls, etc., hearable technology is very common, right? Uh, and also, as it turns out, um, that the R&D spend in hearable technology is actually one of the biggest spending areas in the medical device industry. So in short, I'm very lucky, I'm feeling super blessed uh, just to be living at a time when advances in tech are providing incredible solutions for issues like this. Okay, so so why make this video? You know, why put it out there and make it public? Um, okay, so I've got a few reasons to do this. Um, number one, I already have informed some friends and family and it's honestly just quite exhausting for me to go through everything and explain it in detail. And so my hope is that this video will go a long way for me to not have to repeat myself to friends and family, colleagues and peers. And number two, I, I realized, you know, when informing people that they were unaware of the links between hearing loss and long term risk of cognitive issues. Uh, and in fact, just sharing my story and, you know, my issue, um, you know, with my kind of circle here in Toronto, it's already benefited uh, my friend's mum. Uh, who has been experiencing severe tinnitus for a while um, and has left it mostly untreated. Uh, so if this video helps someone go get checked out for any hearing issues whatsoever, and it turns out to be something severe that requires immediate action, then great, job done. Number three, you know, this is something that I will be dealing with for the rest of my life. There isn't a temporary solution here. Um, as things currently stand, I will be wearing hearing aids for the rest of my life. Now, you know, 99% of, of the content that you see on my YouTube channel and, and social media accounts will always be MMA related, but I want to be an active and vocal member of this community that I'm now part of. So whether that's sharing my personal journey or just amplifying any developments in the space, I want to use my platform to potentially help others. Um, and finally, this is kind of linked to my previous point, but I've already reached out and connected with a few leading medical device manufacturers that are on the bleeding edge of hearable technology. And I'm actually discussing potentially working with them in some capacity. Not sure what that uh, would be right now. It could be in a, in a brand ambassador role, or it could be perhaps, you know, helping them behind the scenes from a social media, digital content perspective, kind of leveraging my area of expertise there. I'm not sure what it looks like right now, but that's another reason for me putting this video out there, you know, because if I do, you know, share any information and more content down the road, you can understand why I'm doing so. Uh, f finally, and just to, to wrap up, you know, if you do have any questions related to this and look, I'm no expert, I'm kind of learning as I go along here, but I have already spent a lot of time doing a ton of research to get the best form of treatment for my condition. Uh, so I can absolutely point you in the right direction. Uh, I'm definitely not out here looking for any sympathy. I'm a confident guy. I can deal with this. No problem. I'm a solutions oriented guy. There are fantastic solutions out there available for me. And I'm actually happy to put this out there in the public domain. Um, but everyone is different. And everyone deals with things like this in their own way. Um, so if you follow me uh, and you want to hit me up to talk about anything uh, related to hearing loss, uh, feel free to DM me or email me. I got you no problem. Um, and, and that's it. Um, so I, I've really enjoyed uh, booting up the YouTube channel this year and kind of getting back to interviewing. Um, but I will be hitting pause on that just for a while uh, until I figure some things out. Uh, the goal is to be back in 2024. 
uh, interviewing and I do have some big plans for the channel outside of just uh, Smack Talk with Sandu. So stick around for that. Um, other than that, I just want to say I appreciate your support. Uh, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate, happy holidays. Wishing you all a healthy and prosperous new year. Don't drink and drive. And I'll speak to you guys soon. Peace.